Welcome! In this tutorial I will demonstrate how to utilize this robot arm with MS Physics joints. First we will begin with analyzing all the parts. All the parts of the robot arm should be a separate top level group. I mean all the movable parts. So as you can see like all those pins and all those separate arms are individual top level groups. Now we'll start by adding joints. So we would want like one servo joint within this base which would be connected to this uh, rotatable base and so we'll add one in here. There we go. We could move it a little, a little upward so we can see it. Yeah, like this. There. So, with the first step complete, we would we could um, start connecting. So I activated the joint connection tool. We select the uh, the rotatable base and hold Control and select the servo joint. And we press play. Oops, we set the floor static. And press play. Um, we see that those are connected. We could also generate a slider to see that um, see apply some action to the to the base. You see it's rotating relative to the base. Now we need to do apply the same concept to the arms. So for this arm to rotate relative to this rotatable base, we should add the joint within this rotatable base. So one joint will go over here to serve a joint. Once again, we activate the joint connection tool, hold control, and select the server joint. And we could generate a slider for this joint. We could name it, we could change the name to arm1 and have it um, rotate from negative 180 to 180 degrees. And we could rename this to a base. There, if I press play now, we could rotate the base and uh, the first time I would rotate relative to it. And also the spin would also. Um, yeah, we, can, we could set this base to static so it doesn't go anywhere. There. And let's finish it up with other arms. So we add a joint within the first arm to connect to the second arm. There. Oops. There. And within this arm. I would move it outward a little bit so we can see it. There. So this joint will be connected to to this rotatable arm. And we need we would need another joint in here to connect to this part. And uh, yeah, more joints in there. It depends on how advanced your robot arm is. The more axes there are, the more joints you'll need. And uh, it would use two uh, pistons for the grabbing for the grippers. There. Now let's apply the connection. So this grip would be connected to this piston and this grip to this piston. And uh, this base, uh, I already connected it. And this connected and this one is connected. This one is connected to this joint, this one to that, and that, and we're basically done. We could um, add the uh, generate slider. We could add the controllers. So um, this would be the arm to rotate, I guess. Yeah, arm to rotate. This would be just arm two. And. This one would be 
arm three, yeah, arm three, and this one will be arm three rotate. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this one would be the first grip. Great. Oh, we would name both of those to grip, so they act as one controller. So I named I named this one grip, and uh, I'll change the limits from zero to to ten. Let's say ten uh, centimeters. So let's change this to from zero to ten. So this is the minimum limit and this is the maximum limit and this is the starting value we could also change this from 0 to 10 and then click on generate slider controller this would automatically set the minimum maximum relative to, to those I mean at this point those changing these values don't affect the uh, the piston until we enable the limits but the, we, we won't just doesn't matter here so this would be the grip. We could copy this and paste the same to this one. And we don't need them opposite because they are already facing in the opposite direction. This one's like looking this way to the right and this one is looking to the left. And okay, let's see what happens. So we press play. Now we got all those controllers. So here is the grip. If we move it, there we go. We got the first arm, got the second arm, thir oops, third. <laughs> we could also adjust the limits for this second server so it doesn't go beyond th the intersection parts. Yeah. So, um, Let's say this arm would go from negative uh, 31 to say 300, negative 30 to 300. Or yeah, uh, I sh this this should be modified actually. So this was arm two. Well, still a little too much. Let's let's change this to um, negative ten to three hundred. Well, as long as we're under control, it wouldn't like affect the model much. We could also um, uh, adjust the angular rate and uh, reduction ratio ratio so it's more smooth. So we could say like this one, make this one point two, and this one say. Uh, 100 degrees per second. So if we turn the second arm, so regardless of how fast I move the controller, the the server moves at the maximum of 100 radians per second. I mean degrees per second. There. And we could also apply everything. We could also apply the same angular rates to all other joints and basically our model would be up and ready. We could also use keyboard controls for for um, for the grippers and other stuff for instance. So we could use uh, key space for the grip. So you could write key space like this. Um, and Key space returns a value from uh, zero to one, and because we need we needed to move uh, from zero to ten centimeters, we simply multiply this by ten, and ten indicates the the value in preset units, which is the centimeters, and same applies to this one, this slider. There, if I press play, click space, as you can see. I'm pressing space, and it's working right. 